Okay, let's do a compound interest problem manually to see how it works. If we borrow $1,000 for three years at 8% interest, compounded semi-annually, what letter goes with this $1,000? That's the principal, or in our, uh, it would be principal in simple interest, it would be present value in our compound interest. All the other letters are the same. What letter goes with three years? That's the time, T. How about 8%? That's the rate. And what number goes with this semi-annually? That's two, isn't it? I'm just using this number sign to mean number of times compounded per year. All right. So those are our numbers. Now let's do it manually. We put $1,000 in the bank. How much are we earning each time we compound it? That's the annual rate divided by the number of times per year. That's 8% divided by 2. We're earning 4% every time they figure interest, aren't we? So the first time they figure interest, they're going to give us 4% on that. So if we have a simple calculator, let's just multiply it. I'm sorry, let's just add 4% to that. If you have a simple calculator, punch 1,000 plus 4%, and it'll give you the future value. It'll give you 1,040. Did that work? You don't even have to punch the equal sign. As soon as you hit the percent sign, it works. If you have a scientific calculator, it won't work that way. If you have a scientific calculator, you would have to say, take 1,000 and multiply it times 1.04 or 104%. That'll give us 100% of that, which is the principal, plus another 4% of that, which is the interest. Okay. So if you have a scientific calculator, 1,000 times 1 1.04 would give you 1040. How's everybody doing conceptually? The first time we compound it, which is at six months, they're going to pay us 4% on whatever's been sitting there for six months. Okay? Now, the next time they compound it, they're going to give us 4% not on the original amount, but on this amount. Because that's what's been sitting there for the last six months. So, let's add another 4% to this, or multiply it again by 1.04. I'll have to move these numbers. Uh, I'll just come down. And that should be more than 1,080, shouldn't it? What do we get now? 180, 8160? Ooh, we got an extra dollar and 60 cents. Where'd that come from? It came from 4% of that $40, the interest on the interest. 4% of that $40 was the $1.60 extra that we earned. Okay. Now, how many times are we going to do this in three years? The number of times we're going to do it is time in years times the number of times we compound it. Three years, twice a year. We're going to do this six times, aren't we? So, if you have a simple calculator, add 4% four more times. If you have a scientific calculator, multiply by 1.04 four more times. So how many times are we going to do this all together? Six times. Okay, six periods. They're going to compound this thing we're, we're, we're just saying we stick a thousand dollars in there and we walk away. So you're not adding or you're multiplying. You can do it either way. It's an either or. It's not a now do this. You can keep adding plus four percent, plus four percent if you've got a simple calculator. Yeah. As long as you do it six times total. Now, what do we get at the end of three years? One, two, six, five. How much? Thirty-two. Thank you. How many of you got that number? Okay. 
I'll assume that's correct. Now, we will have one problem on the test where you'll have to do something by hand, but it won't be more than three or four periods. This was six periods, okay? That's a long one. Will it be compound interest? Yes, be compound interest. Okay. Yeah, this, is, this whole chapter is compound interest. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm looking at the daily deal, what I'm thinking yeah. compound daily. Okay, now, how we're really going to do these problems other than the one that we have to do manually to show that we understand it, is we're going to find N and I, which is 6 and 4%, and we're going to go look those up in a table. So, let's go look in our table, which is table 12.1. I believe it's on page 305. And notice, here's what I've put in my book on my table. First of all, make sure everybody has the right table. The title of the table should say future value of one dollar at compound interest. Everybody got the right table? Future value of one dollar at compound interest. Notice that first column says that's period. That's the number of periods. What I've done in my book is I put a little brace on that first column and said, that's big N. That's the number of periods. Okay, that first column. In other words, big N is the row. And then if you look across at those percentages that start at 1% and then go to 1.5 and then 2, 3, 4, etc., those percentages are little i. So this Row is the number of periods total. This column is the percent we earn each period. So let's go look under row six. N is six and I is four percent. And let's look and see what the table factor is. In other words, what number do we see in the table at the intersection of six and four percent? Yeah, does everybody see 1.2653? 1.2653. Now, let's figure out what that means. Let's look at the title again of that table. The title of the table says, these numbers in this table are the future value of one dollar if you compound it under these conditions. So if we stuck one dollar in the bank, it would grow, if we left it there for six periods at four percent, it would grow to a dollar and little more than 26 cents. So what if we stuck two dollars in the bank? We would multiply this thing by two. What if we stuck fifty dollars in the bank? We'd multiply this thing by fifty. In other words, whatever that table factor is, we're going to multiply it times whatever dollar amount we stuck in the bank. So let's multiply 1.2653 times $1,000. And our future value will be 126530. Notice that we're two cents different. The reason that we're two cents different is that this number is not exact in the table. It's been rounded to four decimal places. And that's what accounts for the difference when you do it by hand. You're using the real number. Now, where did this number come from? Does anybody have a scientific calculator? Tracy, you got one? And, and Daniel, you got one? What's a shortcut way to say 1.04 times itself six times? 1.04 raised to the sixth power, right? That's what this number is. If you take 1.04 and you raise it to the sixth power and you round it to four decimal places, you'll get that. So these numbers didn't come down from Mount Sinai. You know, <laughs> they just punched in one plus this thing and raised it to that power. All right. So that's where the numbers in the table come from. By the way, if you have a scientific calculator and you'd rather do it this way, you can do that. Just show me on your test 
1.04 raised to the 6 times 1,000 equals uh, that, or whatever it is. And I'll give you full credit. You don't have to use the table. All right? 